Hello everyone, welcome to our Wednesday evening devotional. This is Mike McDaniel, the evangelist of the Central Church of Christ in Carothersville, Missouri. We hope you're having a good day today. I'd like you to especially remember the family of Ruby Jones in your prayers. I have only just recently come from her graveside service. Uh, Ruby has a lot of connections to the church. She is the sister of Brother Albert Young, the aunt of Susan Mullenix. She is the sister of uh, former member Maxine Young, and of course, Trauma, the brother of former member Marie Triplett. A lot of different connections to the church. And we want you to continue to remember Trauma and uh, Ruby's family in your prayers. And we're only grateful, as I told Trauma today, uh, how grateful we are that Southgate had opened up in recent weeks and allowed him to get to visit and be uh, with Ruby. Uh, and that, that was a tremendous blessing, and I'm thankful for that. Well, uh, last week we talked about or began a study of, of angels, angelology, the study of angels. There's a lot of fascination today regarding angels. We talked about that some uh, last week. And uh, we studied from Hebrews chapter 1. Let's, um, let's read, shall we, from Hebrews chapter 1. In verse 5, for unto which of the angels saith he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Down in verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them, that shall be heirs of salvation. Last week we looked at the relationship of angels to God. From verse 5, we looked at the worship of angels. Verse 6, and now we see what he says beginning in verse 7 about the form of angels. Angels are spirits. They're created by God to be his servants, and to do his will. They are his ministers. In fact, verse 14 says, they are ministering spirits. We know that angels are able to take up various types of manifestations, including fire and wind. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, Ezekiel said, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a great fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And then in verse 13, As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. Angels very often appeared as men. Angels appeared as men to Abraham and uh, 
in Genesis 18 and then to Lot in Genesis 19. And I think that's probably alluded to in Hebrews 13 and verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. We read of how an angel appeared unto a man, uh, appeared as a man to Manoah, father of Samson, in Judges 13 9. We read of how Jacob wrestled unto the breaking of day with an angel who appeared in the form of a man. In Genesis 32 22 through 28. My, that must have been something to see. The angel that made known to the women at the Lord's sepulcher of his resurrection appeared as a young man, according to Mark 16, 5. The two angels who proclaimed the return of Jesus at the ascension from the Mount Olivet appeared as men clothed in white apparel. Acts 1, 10 through 11. Angels are spirits, but they are capable of assuming any form in which God is pleased to use them. So here in Hebrews 1, we have revealed to us the relationship of angels to God, the worship of angels, and the form of angels. And it also reveals the role or the mission of angels. They are servants of God. I want us to go to verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The angels of God are sent forth to serve the people of God. God's angels are innumerable. Jesus said in Matthew 26, 53, that he could have sent more than for more than 12 legions of angels. That's from 60 to 70,000. Revelation 5.11, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That comes to 100 million angels plus, an indefinite number. No wonder Hebrews 12.22 says, we are come into an innumerable company of angels. Angels are not omniscient, but they are superhuman in knowledge. They, they don't know the meaning of all that is taking place or has taken place with regard to the plan of redemption. They don't know when the world will end. You know Matthew 24 and verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Albeit, angels did announce to Abraham and Sarah, Zacharias and Elizabeth, and to Mary of the birth of their children. An angel warned Joseph to flee to Egypt, lest Herod kill the baby Jesus. Matthew 2, 13-15. Angels are not omnipotent, but they are superhuman in strength. Two angels smote with blindness those men that had gathered at the house of Lot in Genesis 19.11. It was an angel of God that smote in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000 men in 2 Kings 19.35. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, the Bible says an angel shut the lion's mouths. Daniel 6, 22. In Acts 12 and 23, when Peter was bound with two chains and made to sleep, 
between two soldiers, and watchmen were placed before the bars of Herod's prison, which doors were secured by iron gates and bolts and bars and locks. An angel entered the prison and led Peter out as though nothing had been in the way. In 2 Peter 2.11, Peter mentions the fact that angels are greater in power and might than man. And then angels are not omnipresent. But they're swift. In Daniel 9, 20 and 21, there is a passage I wish I, I knew more about. But it simply says that the angel Gabriel, who along with Michael the Archangel are the only two mentioned by name, was caused to fly swiftly at the beginning of Daniel's prayer. And he reached Daniel while Daniel was still praying. The winged aspect of the angels described in Isaiah 6-2 must be to assure us that when the occasion requires, angels can be sent forth to serve with incredible speed. And then angels have served to reveal God's will to man. Angels were involved in giving the law of Moses. Stephen said in Acts 7.53, Who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. In Galatians 3.1, Paul speaks of the law being ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. Angels served as messengers of God to reveal his will in the times of the patriarchs. Angels revealed God's will to Hagar, Genesis 16, 9 through 10. To Abraham, Genesis 18 and 22. To Lot and to Jacob, Genesis 32, 24 through 28. In the days of uncompleted revelation of God in the early days of the new covenant angels ministered in bringing together gospel preachers with searchers of truth you remember how an angel directed Philip to the eunuch in Acts 8 and you remember how an angel spake to Cornelius in Acts 10, 7, to bring him into contact with Peter, that he in his house might hear the gospel and be saved. These examples and many others show the ministry of angels for the benefit of God's people. Angels continue to serve God's people in connection with God's providence. In Hebrews 1, 13, but to which of the angels said it in any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's a quote from Psalm 110, 1 and Psalm 103, 21. No angel has ever been invited to share God's throne. Jesus is seated at the Father's right hand to rule his people. But angels are his ministering spirits. They have a job to do. God sends them forth to do it. And as the question is framed in the Greek New Testament, there is the use of the negative particle, or not, within the question. And this type of construction implies an expected answer in the affirmative. And the sense is, they are ministering spirits. Aren't they? And so, yes, angels are spirits who minister for the Lord's people. And then second, you have the participle being sent forth. That's a present tense form. And it suggests that angels are continually being sent by God as human needs correspond to the divine will. 
they function as servants on behalf of those who are to inherit salvation. That's referring to enjoying it in heaven. But the question is asked, how do angels accomplish these missions? One may not conclude that this phenomenon is miraculous because the New Testament clearly teaches that the age of miraculous gifts and so forth has been terminated according to 1 Corinthians 13, 8-10 and Ephesians 4, 8-16. Now we have the completed revelation. We have the faith that is once for all given to the saints, Jude 3. And miraculous knowledge has been done away, as Paul stated it would be in 1 Corinthians 13, 8. In times past, God spoke in diverse manners. But now, he speaks through his son, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. The old law was spoken by angels, Hebrews 2 and 2. But the new law, given by the son, Hebrews 2 and verse 3, was confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And this is God's way of communicating and revealing his will to man today. Yet God's providential activity remains, of that we have no doubt. And the stories of Joseph and Esther and Onesimus reveal how significantly God can act through providential means, working through natural law to accomplish his purposes. Somehow, God employs angels in the manifestation or the implementation of his providential will. On behalf of his saints in today's world, I think that's a reasonable conclusion. But beyond that, we should not speculate. Notice, though, that their ministering is said to be <clears throat> to us, not to us, but for us. So I'm content to leave with God how and what they do for us. There's so, certainly no evidence that they actually appear today manifesting themselves in human form as they did in ancient times when divine revelation was being supernaturally implemented as in Acts 10. But they minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation at the day of judgment. We are thankful for the angels of God and what they do. I'll talk a little bit more about them next week, Lord willing. Let's have a prayer together. Father, we're thankful for the day and its blessings, and we're mindful, Father. For Troma Jones and for Susan, for their family, we pray thou would comfort them with thy comfort today. We pray thou would bless us as a church family. Bless us as thy people, as we seek and strive to serve thee, the only true and living God. Bless us as we turn from our sins and beg thy forgiveness. Bless us with strength. Bless us, Father, with the, with the strength to stand fast in spite of opposition. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. I'm so glad you tuned in. Tell other people, won't you, about our website and what's available. Till next time, have a good day.